Welcome to a track by track. We're covering a classic in the symphonic metal category. It is Once by Nightwish, an album that I am familiar with the hits. Or I've, um, or I, well, tell you what, and I'll tell a lie. I looked at it and went, I don't really remember anything from this album except a couple of the obvious yeah. ones. Listen to it back. I was like, oh no, I do remember a lot more of this album. Yeah. And I had a fucking blast with this one. Normally I tend to would track my tracks when I'm re listening to. I'll do a lot of skipping. Oh, yeah, I, I do that. the same, yeah. Not so much with this Some one. Some of the songs I know, right? You know, I don't need to re listen to because mm. I maybe even still listen to them a lot today. Mm. And that does actually go for a couple of songs on this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was a this was a big part of my listening back in the day. Yeah, because um, it's probably my first proper symphonic metal album that I purchased. I think possibly. Your um, my, my I'd never had an interest in Nightwish. You yeah. had uh, you were the one with interest in Nightwish. Yeah. That rubs off as got, it always does. I got hooked up. I got hooked on one song on it, which we'll get to at some point on it. And then oh. it's a song that I kind of played to everybody and everyone I played it to thought was fucking same. They were like, "Wow, this is different. It's fucking amazing." Yeah, but you know, it was um, I actually had. Uh, very very brief story on it i this is a genuine true story I, was, I spent a lot of time researching the shop last night but i couldn't find it but it was a record store um at Be- in bexley hay back in the day uh right near where game is okay and i think it was called one oh, okay um, but i kept looking for a record store called one and i couldn't find it anywhere so maybe i was wrong it might have been called independent one price or something like that okay but anyway i remember being in there looking through their very very small two lines of metal section oh yeah of course see what was available and at that time, there was a symphonic metal song playing. And I didn't know who it was, but I really liked it. And being the introverted kind of character I am, I didn't do what like maybe a lot of people would have done, which is go up to the camera and go, hey, what, what's this? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not really my thing. Yeah. <clears throat> but instead, I looked into it. I had enough facts about it. And I thought, I can find this. Yeah. Female singer, you know, all this sort of stuff, like looking into it. And, and it turned out, and this would have been around the time I was looking, June 2004, when Once came out. Yeah that I settled on the fact that it was Once by Nightwish. Right. So I went back and I bought the album. It was Slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it wasn't was Once by Nightwish. Oh, it wasn't? So I never found that song. But I loved the album, so I was all right. But I remember listening to it and thinking, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. It got all the way through the album. I was like, well, it's not this album, but it's a really good album. Yeah, it so worked. I carry it, on with yeah. It. So I kind of accidentally ended up buying Once, pretty much around its release date, uh, but purely because I was trying to find something else. I wonder who it was. Yeah, and I've never known. I've never known. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. The other interesting thing, which I found out when I was researching this, because I always just assumed that the orchestra on this was um, something to do with like Finnish orchestra and that. But it's actually that's the right. London, London Philharmonic Orchestra. Oh, is it really? Uh, recorded hmm. all the parts for it. Well, one of the biggest orchestras in the world. Yeah. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's so present as well. Um, but yes, we start off with Dark Chest of Wonders. What a bombastic start this is. Fucking love how epic this is. Yeah. Uh, chug and riff and it blends so well with Taj's vocals um, brilliant yeah. start yeah I mean I, 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 this is a weird thing with this song right and uh, I wrote it down here again anyway is I, I always think I don't like this song yeah okay like <laughs> whenever I see it and I, 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 I will skip it mm-hmm. or I, I, I'll go to a different song and play from there and I always think I don't like it and then I play it and I remember I really do like this one yeah yeah what am I doing is it because of what it's followed by like you look at a, like you're looking at a track listing or looking on your phone and you see this and then you see what follows and you're like oh I'll start after it maybe yeah maybe I don't know depends I guess how much you care nowadays about I uh, Wish I Had an Angel which is the next it's track it's a good song yeah but for me it's too reliant on the male vocals okay uh, and I prefer the ones where Taj is more prominent uh, the chorus is like it's basically in the chorus. Um, of that, course, I, yeah. I wish I, I, I don't think the I don't, I don't think the male vocals are particularly strong across the album. That's the thing; they're not bad, but I don't think they're particularly strong. I like I wish I had an angel. It's one of the more heavily played ones. So I of guess course, the one that's more not the most overplayed in this album by any. Oh no, but I'd say commercial. It's, yeah, yeah, it's up there. So I don't like it as much as Dark Chest of Wonders. But mm. I do like it. I mean, um, this was the song that I first what well, can remember really liking of Nightwish yeah. um, because I was never into symphonic metal at all back in the day so like because it's so radio friendly so to speak I was hearing it a lot it made it attractive um, yeah. and it's very easy to get into it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, catchy yeah, it's good. It yeah. Catchy. 
And then obviously there's uh, one of the biggest hitters, uh, the biggest Nightwish song ever. Uh like in the scope well, of possibly, I don't know. Like in, in popularity, yeah, it's Nemo. I mean, um, definitely at this point, nothing before it would have been more popular. God no, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Thoughts on Nemo? Um, this is definitely the closest to an overplayed song for me, but not because of me purely, but also because my wife loves it a uh, lot. Even my daughter loves it a lot. This is a song, the accessible. Yep. Uh, the get me into Nightwish song. Almost. Yeah, yeah. And because of that, I've heard it a lot. I do think it's a lovely song. I think yep. it's a great song. Um, you know, so I'm not going to complain about it. But I would admit that if if I was playing once, like in the car on the way home after like tonight, I'd probably skip, skip it. it. Yeah, I, I promise agree with you on that. It's one that I'm too familiar with, where in the sense where it's like re-listening to it, I was like, okay, let me really try and listen to this again. It's been a while. Um, and it's grandiose as fuck, as all the fucking yeah, songs yeah, are. Yeah. That's the thing, you know? Um, followed by Planet Hell. Right, the first thing I've got to say about this, right? So the whole production of this album is, is top draw stuff. It had to be. Yeah. Of course it is. But it wasn't until this song where that actual thought entered my head, where I was like, I was listening to it. I remember I was standing on the tube train and I was like, damn, the production is wicked. And it happened when it was Planet Hell because um, it's operatic as fuck. Yeah. Um, really operatic, really powerful. Yeah. Um, it's, it's probably my least favourite song on the album, weirdly enough. Okay. Uh, although I do like it, but like it's my least liked. Yeah. One out of all of them. I mean, it's got like moments, loads of moments I like. The operatic intro riffs are good. Um, but I think for me, sometimes it's just maybe surrounded by a bit too much quality. On either side of it, I will agree with that you on that one. That makes pale a little bit. Not a yeah. bad song, but you know, it's just not. It's not an emo, and it's not the one that follows. Interesting. You say the one that follows, so you're obviously quite positive about Creek Mary's Blood. Yeah, I think this is a. It's quite different compared to the rest of the album. Mm-hmm. Right for a start, um, it kind of tells a, a different tale, kind of going down the, not something you've maybe put with Finland, uh, with the native Indian. The pan pipes. Uh, no, 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 just the, the kind of story. Um, oh, of what it's about. So like right. the. It, it, the sort of it's about like kind of like the red indian isn't it the, the is that native indian right and it even has a, a spoken word section mm. in it at the end which is from a chief something or other i can't remember what his name was then this is quite odd we'll, just, we'll call him chief chief wood, wood, Woodhammer. C- chief creek mary <laughs> something like that <laughs> do you know what i mean but but yeah i, I think it's like ep- it's, got, it's got a nice epic feel to it it's like a journey you've got like streams and all that sort of like backing going on I agree. The solos are wicked. Not quite that hot on it though. I mean, I wrote who, what, um, in that I remember nothing about this song. Literally no, really. nothing this about this song. Played to death by me, man. It's mellow. It's sweet. Picks up nice to the end. But I am not a fan of the panpipes in it. Just not a fan of them. Yeah. Uh, Siren. Uh, slower tempo. It's another impressive one. There's Tar Tar Tarja. Soars like a bird. I mean, Jesus Christ, she, she does throughout the entire yeah, album. There's yeah. no like. There's it's no. Put- there's no picking that apart. No, no. And that kind of works with the name of the song as well, doesn't it? The Siren. Yeah, yeah. There's some funny elements yeah. to do a lot of the heavy lifting here, um, but there's a banger of a solo in this. Yeah, and also um, a lot of the soloing on this one is the violin mm. as well, which uh, which I think is great. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, no, I was saying, I think it's a great, it's a nice song, well sung, well played. Um, yeah, nothing negative to say about it. To yeah. Honest, really. Um, I saw Dark Dead Gardens as like a sister track to Dark Chest of Wonders because of the similar-esque d- deep guitar chug it's got. Um, good stuff though. Yeah, um, yeah, same. I, I, I quite liked it. It's, it's it's a good song. I, I felt like the ending, the ending of it drags on too long. Uh-huh. I remember, they just it, it feels like it should have stopped at a point, and it just keeps on going and going. It's like one of those songs where it's like you don't know when to stop. So it was interesting as well what you said earlier on because I found that her vocals take a bit, little bit of a backseat to this one, yeah. which is obviously a bit of an issue. Yeah, um, romanticide. Um, this is my least favorite. I found it a bit bland, even though it's got some like bit of headbangery to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just yeah, I've, I've, similar actually. I've got good guitar, drum intro, good solo, but that's about it for me. Probably the most forgettable song in the whole album. Yeah, and then we get the a big one. Yeah, <laughs> a really big one. Ghost Love Score. Yeah, oh, God, what to say about this. I wrote 
as a masterpiece. Yeah. It's the most complete song Nightwish had ever made up to this point and probably ever made since this point. And it's one of the best symphonic metal songs that exists. I wrote, I can't quite believe how many big Nightwish hits came from this one album. It's a very long one, but seriously, is there a more epic track out there? Certainly not from Nightwish. They would try to replicate this sort of journey, like hugeness, in yeah. the future, but to no avail. So basically, I agree with you. Yeah. you would, this was this is the epitome of that. The weird thing is, I, I remember when I was younger with this song, like, and this is, I guess, why I, one of the reasons why um, Creek Mary's Blood was such a big one for me. But mm. I, I remember like spending a lot long periods of time not being sure if I preferred Creek Mary's Blood to this. Okay. Which is quite strange considering you don't really get Creek Mary's Blood yeah. well, mm. uh, much at all. But um, yeah, no, I just think it's, it's an amazing song, man. It really is. It's the most... Like if you ever look at like stuff on YouTube, everyone reacts to this song by Nightwish. Everything's about this song. All the all the videos of them performing. It's always them performing Ghost Love. Ghost Score. Love School. Yeah, you yeah. are right. The nearest I could think of that kind of would get well, like it's about replicating. It was uh, the Poet and the Pendulum. Yeah. Um, with Annette Olsen. Yeah. Um, which uh, I really like as well, but it's not Ghost Love School. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Right, you can say this next <laughs> time. I'm not fucking I was waiting even to trying. say. You could say the next one. Nope. <laughs> Call me Teki Totalia. That's not bad. Do you know how I know that? That's how you pronounce it. Because she's they say it in the song. Um, I wasn't paying up as a other than the fact that it's sung and finished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, super mellow and soft. It's yeah. a nice change of pace. For like, it's a, yeah. it's a nice folk song. Loads of flutes, orchestras, a chance for Taj to show off a bit. Nice violin like, solos, choir singing. It's a beautiful song. Could have been, should have been the outro. Uh, possibly, yeah. But there's um. I, I like the last song. So. That's the thing, so do I. I even wrote, like, well, that should have been the outro. It's not like Higher Than Hope is yeah, a yeah, bad yeah. song. And there's a lot of good reasoning behind it. So Higher Than Hope is uh, dedicated to a guy called Mark Bruland. Okay. Who died uh, just a year before this album was released, or a few months before this album was released, who was a very, very good friend of the main guy in Nightwish. Uh, Thomas. Thomas. Um, so he's an artist and a DJ apparently really really good friend to the band and actually they sample in his spoken vocals in the song oh really um, so when this song which which kind of works off this whole heavenly sort of thing and like it has that line that doesn't it like your death saved me so it's actually a really really personal song which I didn't know listening to it up to this point until I was doing the research on it to try and see like you know mm. just like learn a bit more about the song and uh <laughs> kind of made it i guess more like okay i kind of get his position in a little bit more now maybe yeah no, that Do you know does I mean? now i know that i'm like yeah. okay of course you've added that at the end yeah like that makes i did not know that yeah huh. it's a fucking banger of an album Nightwish is, is best yeah definitely definitely i don't think it's one of those things it's almost like a curse in a way because i just don't think it's possible for them to better it mm. they might hope to achieve near it yeah you know that's something like that but you're gonna you you what sort of an album would you have to release to say, oh, this is better than once? Yeah, you, you know, yeah, you, of, you almost exceeded your yourself a little bit too early. Yeah, really is. Um, yeah, and obviously this version of the band just does not exist anymore, no. so you've always got that crutch as well. Um, yeah, got, like I said, I'm not a massive Nightwish fan modern day at all. Wasn't really back in it either, but I absolutely had such a great time re-listening this. That I wrote the most notes I've written. My fucking <laughs> yeah. thing, um, which says a lot. I you think almost use a whole page. Yes, yes. Like um, me who's on page two already. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Night wishes once. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you let us know what you think in the comments and hit that like and subscribe button.